Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. In our last two lectures, we have discussed the basic terminologies in Indian polity or in Indian constitution as well as fundamentals of Indian constitution. And in today's lecture, we will be seeing rights in the Indian constitution, rights in the sense fundamental rights. And of course, uh, I can uh, say one thing, it is going to be one of the most important lectures in the series because knowing rights or fundamental rights is very important. It is uh, a major component of Indian constitution or of Indian polity. So, uh, before starting this session, I request your complete attention or full attention to this lecture. And these are the important topics we are going to look at uh, in today's session. What are fundamental rights? How these rights are protected? Role of judiciary in protecting these rights? Then directive principles of state policy, right to property, difference between fundamental rights and DPSP, directive principles of state policy. So, let's look at one by one. First, we are starting with what are fundamental rights? You know, there are two types of rights available in India. One is ordinary legal rights and second is fundamental rights. And you know the difference between ordinary legal rights and fundamental rights. Ordinary, ordinary legal rights are protected by ordinary laws. And fundamental rights are protected by uh, what constitution, right? That's a, the that's a main difference between ordinary legal rights and fundamental rights. Ordinary legal rights are protected or supported by uh, ordinary laws and fundamental rights are supported by the constitution, right? And we have a terminology bill of rights. Bill of rights is nothing but rights mentioned and protected by the constitution. Bill of right means, rights means uh, what bill or rights mentioned in the uh, constitution or rights mentioned and protected by the constitution. And back in 1928, Motilal Nehru Committee had recommended Bill of Rights. That means years back, uh, Motilal Nehru uh, Committee had uh, recommended uh, to implement this Bill of Rights. So, you know, Motilal Nehru, uh, father of great uh, Pandit Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru. And what is the meaning of fundamental? Fundamental means very important, right? Fundamental means very important. Uh, here, uh, the meaning is, uh, when we connect it to, when we relate it to constitution fund, uh, for fundamental rights, it means so important and are listed separately and special provision for its protection are also given. That means these are very important, that's the first point, very important rights and these are given separately in part 3, part 3 of the constitution. Part 3 is all about fundamental rights, okay. Then uh, there are special provisions are also allotted for their protection, for the protection of fundamental rights. That means it's very important, right? We do, we all enjoy this fundamental right, six fundamental rights. Initially, it was seven. Uh, right to property was uh, taken away, removed. Okay, yeah. Then uh, ordinary legal rights and fundamental rights. Ordinary legal legal rights are protected and enforced by ordinary law. Uh, it can be changed by the legislator by the process of lawmaking. Of course, you know, uh, by the parliament, uh, it can uh, be changed. Okay, the the ordinary laws can be changed. But if you want to change fundamental rights. Uh, parliament cannot do it uh, by, uh, you know, simple majority or uh, just like uh, what changing ordinary laws. It uh, needs constitutional amendments. That's the difference, okay? Parliament can uh, simply, we can say simply, uh, make some changes in uh, the ordinary, ordinary legal rights. But if you want to make changes in the fundamental rights, you have to amend. You know what amendment is, right? Changing the constitution without affecting the basic structure doping, of course, yeah. But fundamental rights may... Uh, only be changed by amending the constitution itself. Judiciary has the powers and responsibility to protect and the fundamental rights from violations. Of course, judiciary, the, uh, the organ, one of the organs of government is responsible for protection as well as interpretation of fundamental rights. You know, we have already seen it, right? Judiciary is the organ uh, that is responsible for uh, interpreting the constitution, protecting the constitution, right? Yes. So, fundamental rights are not absolute or unlimited. What is that? Fundamental rights, even fundamental rights are not absolute or unlimited. That means government, government can impose restrictions on it. Okay. Government, uh, government can put reasonable restrictions on it. And of course, you know, uh, fundamental rights are mentioned in part three of the constitution. Uh, so uh, at present we have six fundamental rights. Okay. Yeah. Then these are, uh, these are the fundamental rights, uh, right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, uh, cultural and educational rights, right to constitutional remedies, okay? And uh, in, in uh, the previous section, uh, I've given you a, uh, you know, a mnemonic, uh, FRAC, right? E, E stands for equality, F, freedom, F, then E, exploitation, FA, then R, religion, FRA, 
are effer okay then educational rights of course you have to remember cultural yeah then it's it's common sense yeah okay then fra c constitutional remedy so it's easy to remember fr e f e r e c equality freedom exploitation religion uh, education right and constitutional remedies okay and uh, this time i'm not going to uh, you know uh, uh, give uh, the details about it we are going to look at uh, all these one by one okay so moving on the first is right to equality and it is uh, given in uh, article 14 to 18 article 14 to 18 uh, are uh, directly connected with or related to right to equality okay so these are the rights equality before law uh, article 14 says what equality before law and equal protection of laws okay it gives two things one is equality before law and equal protection of law we are all equal before the law and we do get equal protection of laws okay so article 14 and article 15 what is that article 15 Pro prohibition of discrimination on ground of religion race caste sex or place of birth then equal access to shops hotels uh, wells tanks bathing guts and uh, roads etc that means there must not be any prohibition uh, or discrimination okay there is yeah uh, prohibition of uh, discrimination on grounds of yeah it's it's not allowed right the discrimination uh, on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth is uh, not allowed with what article 15 that means we are getting equal access to every public places you know when you look at shops hotels wells tanks what you what you can see is all this tells us about public places okay not about private places we cannot enjoy these uh, you know uh, rights in private places we can enjoy these in public places only okay yeah then uh, 16 it is about opportunity equality of opportunity in public employment equality of opportunity in public employment and 17 abolition of untouchability abolition of untouchability 17 and uh, 18 it's about abolition of titles and what about titles uh, title like you know raja maharaja uh, no one can use raja or maharaja maharaja okay but academic titles like doctor and military titles like major major general okay they can uh, use it but Mah what raja maharaja uh, they, they cannot use it okay yes so th that's what title exactly is okay so these are the uh, what right to equality article 14 to 18 14 about equality before law and equal protection of law then uh, 15 prohibition of discrimination on various grounds then uh, 16 opportunity in public employment and 17 untouchability and finally 18 it's about abolition of titles okay abolition of title except what military as well as academic titles then article 16 uh, 4 plus 4 there is a provision that nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any provision for the reservation of appointments or post in favor of any backward class of citizens which in the opinion of the state is not adequately represented in the service under the state what is article 16 article 16 is about uh, equality of opportunity right uh, 14 15 16 is about uh, what equality of opportunity in public employment that means the very meaning is we have different categories of you know uh, people in this uh, country uh, some uh, are general category some are uh, obc other backward class some are sc some are sts okay yeah there is a division of course and uh, equity and equality there are two uh, you know terminologies somewhat uh, connected equity and equality what is equality if i am getting uh, one rupee you're getting one rupee someone else is also getting one rupee that means all are getting equal equal amount of uh, things okay but in equity i am getting one rupee someone else okay you are getting two rupee and someone else is getting three rupee what is that why um, uh, you're getting two or uh, someone else is getting three the very idea is the very idea is uh, uh, those people those may be you know uh, uh, backward in the society educationally and uh, you know yes uh, economically of course yeah e e socio-economic uh, inequality may be there economically and educationally they may be backward and we have to bring them to the what forefront right we have to bring them to the forefront for them for that purpose we have to support them giving something extra that is what article 16 uh, clause 4 says uh, that is state can uh, what favor those kind of 
backward class of citizens. Hope you understood the logic, right? Equality and equity. In equality, all are getting the same, but in equity, uh, backward uh, class citizens may get something extra because uh, uh, to just to make what uh, uh, every everyone uh, the same you know uh, trying actually it is trying it's a trying process everyone uh, to the same uh, platform to the same level okay yeah just to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, enable what level playing field okay yes so that's a, that's the idea of article 16 4 and now we are moving on to uh, next uh, set of uh, rights that is right to freedom right to freedom article 19 to 22 and article 19 what is article 19 right to freedom of speech and expression one of the most important rights uh, uh, related to freedom uh, freedom of speech and expression there are uh, five more rights uh, like you know uh, assembly association movement uh, then residence profession these are the rights available in article 19 along with uh, freedom of speech and expression okay freedom of speech and expression then uh, assembly association right to assembly right to association then right to move right to residence right to uh, you know profess any profession okay yes then uh, article 20 what, what is article 20 it's about you know conviction okay uh, in in the case of any uh, offenses yeah um, then article 20 what is article okay article 21 what is article 21 that's a most important article here in you know right to freedom that is protection of life and personal liberty article 21 deals with protection of life and personal liberty and what is article 21 a it's about right to education right right to education and article 22 it's about uh, protection against arrest protection against arrest okay yes so um, all are important then uh, equality and freedom or liberty are the most essential uh, components uh, required in a democracy equality and freedom and what is liberty liberty means freedom of thought expression action and article 21 says protection of life and personal liberty that means no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law you know what procedure established by law is what is the other side of uh, procedure established by law it is due process of law right in india we we possess procedure established by law uh, we do just uh, look at the procedure of you know doing things if it is correct everything is fine but in due process of law it uh, not only looks at uh, the procedure but also look uh, what look at the um, what uh, the law is just and fair right yes then the foremost right among uh, rights to freedom uh, arrested person has right to defend himself by a lawyer of course uh, one of the rights then mandatory for the police to produce him or her uh, to the nearest magistrate within 24 hours including the travel time okay including the travel time uh, some uh, okay in, in one year I, I don't exactly remember the year um, I think uh, two years back mm, there was a question regarding this okay so you can expect questions from any part of this so each and every part is uh, very important um, first of all you have to develop a base okay develop a base uh, in of Indian polity then you can start uh, you know after reading newspaper and after reading articles and everything uh, Lakshmi Kant everything uh, you, you will have uh, a thorough understanding of everything right yes then okay we will okay we will see all the you know uh, previous questions and everything uh, in the in the coming lectures so don't worry then also include uh, yeah live with human uh, human dignity free from exploitation right to shelter and livelihood these are some of the uh, fundamental rights we enjoy and uh, everyone uh, should enjoy right yes so moving on next is preventive detention preventive detention what is a preventive detention it, it it means person can be arrested out of apprehension out of fear that he or she is likely to engage in unlawful activities he is likely to engage in unlawful activities maybe in the very near future without following the above procedure that means even without following the actual procedure the procedure established by law a person can be what uh, arrested a person can be arrested because uh, uh, the, the police the police system uh, if they are thinking that uh, he or she is likely to uh, do some unlawful activities in the very new future he or she may be getting arrested even without following the uh, procedure established by law okay it can be extended only for three months that means he can be uh, in detention or she can be in detention only for three months effective tool to deal with anti-social elements of subversives okay it is an uh, it's a very effective tool uh, 
uh, for uh, to deal with anti-social elements. Yeah. Then right to freedom of speech and expression is subject to restrictions such as public order, peace and morality. Of course, you know that uh, uh, freedom of assembly, okay, peacefully without arms. A restriction can be imposed on assembly or of uh, five or more uh, person as unlawful, right? Okay, there can be restrictions. Uh, uh, as, as we said, as we, we have seen, nothing is absolute. Even fundamental rights are not absolute, right? Yeah. No one is guilty unless the court has found that person guilty of an offense. It's a very important point. No one is guilty before the law. Before the law. Unless the court has found that person guilty of an offense. Court has to decide. If court decides a person is guilty of an offense, then he is guilty. Otherwise, not. Okay? That's one of the finest point, points in our what, constitution. Of course. Yeah. So, this is about preventive detention, uh, you know, um, arresting a person uh, to uh, prevent him from uh, uh, doing antisocial activities. Yeah. Next is right against exploitation. We have completed two rights, right to equality and right to freedom. Now we are heading to right to exploitation. And it can, okay, it's in uh, article 23 to 24, 23 and 24, okay. Yeah, right exploitation, uh, right against exploitation beggar or forced labor without payment, uh, buying and selling of human beings and uh, using them as slaves uh, below the age of 14 in dangerous jobs like factories and mines. Uh, please note the point, below the age of 14, uh, those who are below the age of 14 uh, cannot work in, uh, you know, dangerous job, jobs, they cannot engage in dangerous jobs like factories and mines. They are dangerous, right? Yes. And article 23, it's about forced labor or beggar, okay, forced labor and uh, you know uh, human uh, buying and selling se buying and selling of human beings okay then 24 about um, you know uh, what rights of children okay child labor yeah rights of children or we can say child labor okay yes so uh, article 23 and 24 it's about right against exploitation okay uh, forced labor and child labor we can say next is right to freedom of religion and it's from article 25 to 28 Okay, right to freedom of religion. That means everyone enjoys the right to follow the religion of his or her choice. It's not about birth. Okay, we can decide our own what religion. Even if you, you know, uh, you born in a family of uh, one religion, you can opt your own religion. There is no issue in uh, selecting or, you know, opting that. So freedom of conscience, a uh, person may choose any religion or may choose not to follow any religion. Okay, there are two yeah, things, uh, interesting, right? A person can choose any religion or a person may not choose, not to follow any religion, at least, yes. Then government can impose restriction on uh, to protect public order, morality, health. Of course, every time uh, the government can impose something on it. Okay, only article 20 and 23 cannot be uh, withdrawn, even if at the time of emergency. All other things, uh, most of uh, other things can be what? Uh, suspended but article 20 and 23 20 and 21 sorry 20 and 21 cannot be uh, taken away even at the time of emergency so uh, in order to maintain public order morality and health there can be you know government can uh, put restrictions on uh, most of the things right most of the fundamental rights yeah freedom of religion is not an uh, unlimited right just like you know any other fundamental right freedom of religion is also not a what uh, come what uh, absolute right or we can say an unlimited right it's uh, subject to reasonable restrictions so uh, this is all about you know uh, engaging in uh, religious activities okay yes then cultural and educational rights article 29 and 30 and article 30 is about you know minorities to uh, establish educational institution and to administer them that's what article 30 is then our constitution believes that diversity is our strength of course we know uh, we have to go with this, go with that. Then rights of uh, minorities to maintain their culture. And, are, okay, minorities. What are minorities? Uh, when we uh, look at the term, listen to the term minority, we most of most of us think that there is only religious minority. But act, uh, actually, there are some other minorities as well, like linguistic minority, cultural minority. So, uh, it includes uh, all kinds of minorities, not only religious minorities, but also linguistic and cultural minorities are also included in this provision okay so here is our last right to constitutional remedies article 31 and 32 article 31 and 32 
and article 32 is all about what writs okay and uh, ambedkar dr ambedkar uh, the great you know uh, uh, lawyer and of course uh, the father of uh, indian constitution uh, said uh, constitutional remedies is heart and soul of the constitution heart and soul of the constitution and this is the one constitutional remedies that uh, even if the government imposes too much restrictions or too much uh, violations on fundamental rights of citizens a supreme court or high court can intervene in it okay with the help of various writs so uh, rights to approach the supreme court or the high court to get any fundamental rights restored in the case of their violation if you feel uh, uh, some one of our uh, what fundamental rights got violated we can restore it you can approach either high court or supreme court for restoring your right your fundamental right that is the beauty of constitutional remedies that is why ambedkar uh, you know said it as heart and soul of the constitution the courts can issue special orders known as writs the courts can issue special orders for restoring the fundamental rights that got violated okay yes and uh, there are some okay there are five writs habeas corpus mandamus uh, then uh, certiorari yeah you can see this prohibition certiorari and quorando okay so let's look at one by one the first is habeas uh, corpus what is habeas corpus it literally means to have the body of the meaning of habeas corpus is to have the body of okay yes then a writ of habeas corpus means that the court orders that the arrested person should be presented before the court okay the arrested person should be brought or should be presented before the court it can also issue to set set free an arrested person if uh, the manner uh, or the ground of arrest is not lawful not lawful or satisfactory that means uh, by illegal means okay so habeas corpus uh, you know it orders uh, that the arrested person should be present before the court to have the body of that's it uh, literally literal meaning okay yeah next is mandamus mandamus uh, it's another writ this writ is issued when the court finds that the person or the or a particular office holder is not doing legal duty and thereby infringing on the rights of an individual if a public office holder is not doing his duty uh, or the, the court supreme court or high court can issue mandamus okay mandamus so it's about a particular office holder is or a public employee we can say particular what office holder we can say public employee is not doing legal duty okay not doing legal duty yes that violates uh, the rights of another individual then prohibition this it is what issued by uh, high court uh, that is uh, what high court or supreme court uh, when a lower court has considered a case going beyond its jurisdiction Pro prohibition okay to forbid that's meaning to, uh, prohibition means to forbid that is when a lower court uh, what go beyond its jurisdiction uh, high court or supreme court can issue prohibition Pro prohibit prohibit the lower court uh, on taking uh, what something uh, the case that uh, they are uh, not meant to that particular court okay yes it's beyond that it's beyond its jurisdiction that's what prohibition is it prohibits uh, doing something okay yeah next is uh, quo warranto quo warranto the literal meaning is of course you know uh, um, by what authority okay by what authority or warrant if the court finds that a person is holding office but is not entitled till to hold that office a person is holding an office but he is not entitled he is not entitled to hold that office uh, it issue a writ of uh, quo warranto and uh, it restrict the person from acting an office holder okay um, yes that is quo warranto and uh, next is certiorari certiorari means uh, to be certified or yeah to be informed okay under this writ uh, court orders a lower court or another authority to transfer a matter pending before it to high authority or court okay that is to be informed or to be uh, certified okay uh, something is transferred to what the higher court then national okay in addition to these uh, five writs uh, you know there are some uh, institutions uh, authorized by or you know uh, established by uh, the government of india uh, time to time uh, to uh, you know to, to to protect the fundamental rights of individuals 
uh, National Commission for Minorities, National Commission for Women, National Commission for Scheduled Caste are uh, some of the institutions and National Commission for Women. Uh, it was established in 1992 and uh, other two uh, 1993 and of course here we can see uh, no doubt one point National Commission for Scheduled Caste. It's a constitutional body and National Com uh, Commission for Minorities and National Commission for Women are statutory bodies. You know what a constitutional statutory is, right? Constitutional gets the support of constitution and statutory, that means constitutional amendment, right? And statutory means by the parliament, by the lawmaking body. Next is Human Rights Commission, NHRC. Uh, it was, uh, you know, established in 1993 and the poor, illiterate and the deprived sections of the society must be able to uh, exercise their rights and for that, uh, Government of India established National Human Rights Commission, okay? Yeah, uh, it co it's composed of a former Chief Justice of India. Uh, you, most of the time, uh, the Chairman of uh, National Human Rights Commission is the recently retired Chief Justice of India, okay? A former Judge of the Supreme Court, former Chief Justice of High Court, two other members who have knowledge and practical experience in matter, of, matter relating to human rights. Then the Commission does not have a power of prosecution. That means, Commission, this Commission, National NHRC, National Human Rights Commission does not have the power to prosecute someone. That's the right of, uh, you know, court, right? It can merely make recommendations to the government. It can do only one thing. It can, okay, it can, uh, you know, research on uh, the matters concerning and it can uh, report to the government. Plus, it can uh, make recommendations as well, okay? Yes. So, uh, it's not a full-fledged body uh, in, in terms of its, you know, <coughs> area of uh, influence, okay? Yeah. Next is about directive principles of state policy. We have already seen in, in our previous session, okay? So, directive principles of state policy, which are the uh, different points comes to your mind when you uh, get to know, uh, get, get to, you know, DPSP. One is, it is aimed to establish welfare state, right? Taken from Irish constitution, Ireland, Irish constitution, yes. Then equality and well-being of all citizens, guidelines incorporated in the constitution, that is DPSP. These are some of the guidelines in the constitution that has to be in mind at the time of making policies, okay, by the government, then uh, used to establish a uh, welfare state and it is non-justiciable, cannot be enforced by the judiciary. That means we cannot approach a court to make it in effect, okay, yes, that is it is non-justiciable but a fundamental right rights is justiciable, okay? We can approach a court in case of violation and we have uh, seen in you know, just uh, previous video, means previous session, okay? Previous, uh, uh, what, slide, yeah. The goals and objectives uh, that uh, we as a society should adopt, certain rights uh, that individuals uh, should uh, enjoy apart from fundamental rights and certain policies that the government should adopt, okay? These are some of the, you know, things that have uh, done so far with the help of this DPSP or uh, just by taking care of DPSP in, uh, you know, uh, at the time of uh, decision making process or policy making process, uh, they passed several seminar abolition bills, nationalizing banks, uh, enacted numerous factory laws, fixed minimum wages, then cottage and small industries were promoted and provision for reservation for the uplift, uplift means uplift of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Directive principles include the right to education, formation of Panjaiti Raj, institutions all over the country, then a partial right to work under uh, employment guarantee program and the midnight, what, midday meal program, midday meal program. These are some of the things uh, that uh, were done, uh, taken care of DPSP, okay, at the time of policy making. Then fundamental duties. Actually, at present we have, uh, there are 11 fundamental duties. In 1976, uh, at the time of 42nd amendment, during Indira Gandhi, Gandhi government, uh, to the constitution uh, was passed. Among uh, other things, this amendment inserted a list of fundamental duties also. Uh, in all, 10 duties were uh, enumerated at the time uh, in 1976. But in um, uh, 2002, with uh, 86th Constitutional Amendment Act, 11th right, what, uh, duty were also added and it's about education. Okay, uh, Education uh, uh, for the uh, what uh, students or, you know, uh, children uh, at the age of or uh, between the age of 6 to 14 okay that was uh, 11th uh, fundamental duty which were uh, you know incorporated or uh, incorporated into uh, fundamental duties 
uh, with the help of uh, 86th Constitutional Amendment Act uh, 2002. As citizens, we must abide by the Constitution, defend our country, promote harmony among all citizens, pro protect the environment, and these are some of the fundamental duties. Okay, yes, these are the duties of the citizens. Uh, we have to take care of all this uh, to uh, you know uh, make India as India, right? Yes, and this is also non-justiciable. Then relationship between fundamental rights and directive principles. Of course, you can see some relations or relation, right, between fundamental rights and directive principles. And before looking at this, uh, what is the main difference between fundamental rights and directive principles? Fundamental rights uh, restrict the government doing things or to do things, but directive principles uh, encourage uh, the government to do things, right? Fundamental rights is, uh, to some extent, it is a negative aspect for the government and directive principles is a positive aspect, okay? Yeah. Then uh, it is possible to see both fundamental rights and uh, directive principles are complementary to each other because uh, they, they work differently uh, to, you know, <laughs> somewhat uh, opposite, yeah. Then fundamental rights restrain the government from doing certain things. Fundamental rights control or re what restrict the government from doing certain things while directive principles exhort encourages the government to do certain things, right? Fundamental rights mainly protect the rights of individuals while directive principle ensure the well-being of the end society, welfare society, right? Fundamental rights protect the rights of individuals but directive principles or DPSP related to well-being of the entire society. That's another point. Fundamental rights were so important and sacred that they cannot be limited even for the purpose of implementing directive principles. That means which one is more important, fundamental rights or directive principles? It is fundamental rights. Okay, it is very important as well as sacred. Even if we compare it to directive principles, because fundamental violation of fundamental rights. That means uh, it affects so many other rights as well, right? Right to life and liberty, right to live with dignity. It affects so many other uh, rights as well. Okay, yes. So these are the differences between uh, fundamental rights and uh, directive principles. We haven't seen the differences actually. We have seen the relationship, right? Yes. Then right to property. Uh, right to property was a fundamental right. Uh, fundamental right to acquire, possess and maintain property. Uh, acquire, process and, possess and maintain property. But in 1973, uh, the Supreme Court uh, gave a decision that the uh, right to property was not a part of the basic structure of the constitution and therefore parliament uh, has the power to abridge uh, this right by an amendment. And very important, in 1976, with the 44th Amendment Act, it removed the right to property from the constitution or from the list of fundamental rights and converted it to a what, into simple legal right under uh, 300A. Okay, that means right to property is no more a fundamental right. It is a legal right. It is just a legal right protected under Article 300A. Okay, so uh, it was done uh, at the, you know, uh, the, the very famous Keshavan Dabharji versus State of Kerala case. And uh, that was the time uh, the uh, Supreme Court bench consists of 13 members, the highest ever, uh, what, bench in the history of India. Okay, yes. Then the court was saying that the parliament cannot make uh, amendment that violated fundamental rights. The controversy was settled by important uh, decision in uh, Keshavan Dabharji case. In this case, the court said that there are certain basic features of the constitution and this cannot be what changed by the parliament. We have already seen it in, in our previous session. That is, uh, even if we are making changes in the constitution, it must not affect uh, the basic structure of the constitution, basic features of the constitution. And one more thing, the basic features were are not defined anywhere in the constitution. Okay, Basic features are not defined anywhere in the constitution. Please always keep in mind because in your prelims, you can... Uh, um, uh, you had uh, questions like, you know, uh, this is defined in the constitution, this is not defined in the constitution. So, you have to have an understanding of it. Yeah. So, uh, these are the very, you know, important topics uh, we have uh, seen. So, uh, let's have a quick recap uh, of the things we have done in today's session. Yeah, with the help of this. So, uh, we were uh, discussing what uh, uh, fundamental rights, okay, fundamental rights. It's very important and uh, special provisions are there to protect this. So, fundamental rights uh, are protected by the constitution and these are some of the rights, uh, equality, freedom, 
uh, these are the rights okay equality freedom exploitation uh, religion educational institution or educational rights and uh, constitutional remedies okay so hope you understood everything uh, you can uh, directly make notes out of it because i have included most of the things here in this uh, slide in these slides okay yeah so uh, this is all for the time uh, time being and you can uh, watch uh, the previous uh, session see uh, previous uh, lectures if you haven't so uh, in the coming uh, lecture we will see the next uh, chapters okay so stay tuned for more videos and we will uh, see you in the next video uh, take care